All right, Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashmi Al Shai, Bashim Makakudash, the Bawanas to the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek Abdel, doing his work of faith and labor of love and true sincerity. All right, I want to get into a um, quick topic uh, based upon the parable uh, here in um, Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. You know, it's definitely one of my favorite, uh, you know, little parables or, you know, uh, sayings that I, I like to get into. And, um, you know, it just always speaks uh, volumes to me, you know, in the spirit, you know. But um, but I'm, I'm going to start off. <clears throat> I'm going to start off a little further up. I'm going to start off at um, uh, verse 10. It says, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Whatsoever thy hand findest to do. Do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. And, you know, just thinking about that, you know, it, it rings bells of why we really have to give this, you know, thing our all in, in all our efforts, you know, and just how, you know, uh, how it says uh, time and chance happen to them all. That just lets you know, like, yo, it's it's the most high that decides what's going on. You know, it's the most high that decides everything that's going on. You know, we try to plan things out or do this and to do that. But so many people out there, you know believe in YOLO and, um, you know, they take things into their own destiny, into their own hands. Now you can try to prepare, you can try to prepare a path for yourself, but it's the Lord that truly controls that, man, and, and how things are going to happen, you know, because with every little thing you can have, uh, just say for instance, you know, uh, use, use, basketball, uh, use basketball, for instance, right? When you're using basketball, you know, um, uh, the Golden State Warriors, you know, everybody believed that they were, uh, they are the better team that had the more talent and everything they should have won, you know, but at the end of the day, what happened? The most high willed it for what the Raptors to win. He had KD get injured. He had uh, uh, Clay Thompson get injured. A couple other league players, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so what? Time and chance happened to them all. So it was the Raptors' time. You know, the, the worries, it wasn't their time. So that's just one example of how the Lord is always maneuvering things, you know, within the earth uh, for things to be how he wants them to be, not how everybody else sees them that they should be, you know. So, um, oh boy, these damn things. Uh, what was that? Let me just throw my focus off, slack here. Um, verse 12, um, it says, For man also knoweth not his time as the fishes that are taken in the evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in the evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. You know? And uh pretty much how you know just at a point in time you're going to be trapped you're going to be snared into into something you know and it's just like you just got to do you know your best in the spirit to be on the lookout for uh things that are coming your way to attack you you know and that that's just how it is and you know a prime example is getting into uh this scenario here because uh within this parable it just always shows it just shows you that you know a, a prime example of it was it's many things but one example of you know you may be just thinking everything is all good but then a big problem is going to arise and now you're going to have to figure out a way how to get yourself out but really it's the lord that's guiding you know the path to get you out you know but of course you know as us being in the flesh we're going to think we're going to try to maneuver we're going to try to use our wisdom to the best of our ability you know and, and that's why the most high constantly puts us in these situations for us to be able to uh you know, lean upon him and to know that there's going to be a way provided, you know, along with us using discernment, wisdom, you know, our, our, the knowledge in which we have, 
know, so on and so forth, you know. So this is uh, verse 13 that says, uh, This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. There was a little city <clears throat> and few men within it, and there came a, a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by the city, by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. So, <laughs> you know what? A great king came up against uh, this this particular place, you know, and, and took it over, right? Oh, well, the Caesar well, came up against it. But what? It was a poor wise man by his wisdom, you know, they were able to overcome. But yet nobody remembered this man. Why is that? Because we know within the society, within all societies, you have to be holding some type of high prestige for somebody to consider to you anything, man. And that's why the Lord is with the lowly and the humble, because it's the man that literally comes out of the mud or comes out of the dirt, so to speak, you know, who, who truly holds that right honor within him, man, you know, and that nobody's looking at, you know. Um, the scriptures say in uh, the book of Sirach, uh, roughly paraphrasing, um, uh, man, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, yeah, one that was never thought of have won the crown. Yeah, I forget the exact scripture, but yeah, one that was never thought of, uh, uh, you know, has, has taken the crown pretty much. And, and that's just how it is. You know, the person that you least expect, the Lord is going to raise them up out of the dunghill, man. He did it with, 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 uh, David, you know. When his brothers was thought, one of his brothers was thought to be, you know, uh, the one that to take the throne, so on and so forth, just because their height, their stature, so on and so forth. But the Lord chose David, you know, a man of his own heart, you know. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I remember, read verse 15 again. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then said, Ah, wisdom is better than strength. And nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. So it's common sense that wisdom is better than strength. What a, a physical strength, because you can have a person, you know, eight feet tall, brolic as I don't know what, but they can get their ass beat, so to speak, based upon them not having wisdom and them just trying to use brute force, you know, nothing but brute force. So it's always going to be about wisdom. It's always going to be about wisdom. That's what everything is predicated upon. You know, uh, uh, physical strength may be included in certain points, but in all things, it's always wisdom that's going to trump all. You know, always, man. That's just the way it goes, because what you what do you have to use? You have to use your brain for things. You know, your, 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 phys your physical is not always required of you, but your mind is always going to be required in any given situation, man. You know, uh, that's that's the telltale sign of, you know, uh, who who truly has the wisdom and who doesn't. You know, who's truly prudent and foreseeing the evil. You know, the things that come up against them and and who doesn't. You know, um, yeah. And it said what? Well, uh, then said our ah, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despising his words are not heard. So that's just like us out there in the highways and byways. You get all this applies to Yahweh Shah himself as well, because nobody remembers him within this time except for us of the hopeful elect. You know, nobody is hearing our words. They don't want to hear our words because we don't have one. We don't have no high prestige. We we not we not uh, uh sitting at the top of the throne, so to speak, within the society. You know, we don't have the big mega churches. We don't have one of the fancy clothes. We don't have the money. We don't have the house. We don't have the cars. So therefore, our words are despised because all people truly honor is money within the society, within all societies, man. You know, and when the scriptures say wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to them that have it. So it's a balance with things, man. You know, so uh, verse 17, the words of wise men are heard and quiet. More than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. So the, the the words of the wise are going to be heard amongst those who are lowly just as he is. Or for those that have the same type of mind frame or in the same stead as he is. That's why the Lord, you know, uh, uh, allowed us to open ear to be able to hear his word and to give ear, you know, and to follow, you know. And the rest of the world can't because they rather hear the cry 
you know, a, a, a fools than to actually what satisfies and what soothes their soul, what can be the bread of life for their soul, you know. Uh, wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroy much good. And, and that's what it all boils down to, man. Wisdom trumps all things, period, man. It's, there's nothing greater than wisdom, and that wisdom is the breath of the Most High. It comes directly from the Most High, you know. So one person that's not right, you know, can do a lot of damage, you know, uh, within any given society when or within any given scenario, and that can play a big factor upon other people's lives if they're not using wisdom, man. So we always have to use wisdom in all things, you know, uh, that we endeavor in uh, within this life, man, you know. So, um, you know, with that, you know, I hope this uh, segment was edifying. And I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashmi Abishai, Bashmi Kakudash, Dabawana to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there doing his work of faith, a labor of love, truth, sincerity. Shalom.